Are you interested in becoming a mortgage loan officer? In this video, I'm going to share with you five easy steps on how you can become a mortgage loan originator. I'll share how to apply, pass your test, and some of the questions that you would want to ask during your interview process. Be sure to watch the video until the very end to get all the nuggets as a loan officer. Since 2004, I may have some stories to share with you, the pros and cons, and just what to expect if this is the direction that you want to take. So let's get right into it. I want to preface by saying this is the easiest and fastest real estate license and by far the most affordable. All in all, you can get licensed in about 30 days and it will cost you no more than $550. That's the courses, fingerprints, doing the background check, credit check, and also paying for the license. Getting your mortgage loan officer license would be to make sure you take the minimum hours required for pre-licensing. Each state can vary at minimum. You do need 20 hours. Here in Nevada, in particular, they require 30. 20 being pre-licensing and the remaining 10 will be elective. So making sure you take care of that step first. Going into the steps that are required to apply for the license, I want to caution you because if you do not pass step one, which is your criminal background check, I wouldn't encourage you to continue further down the road of taking the classes, paying for the license, and so forth. As a loan officer, we are required to have a clean background check. And what I mean by that is you are to not have any past felonies. Perhaps if you have, it can really hinder you from being able to qualify for this license. I've had it where people will come to me expressing interest to become a loan officer. They go through the process and they learn that they are at a hard stop because of a past felony that didn't sound too life-threatening. However, it can vary. So being that I am not the authority to approve that process, I do want to caution you prior. Okay, so going back into the steps, step one would be the criminal background check. You would log in to MLS system. I can provide you all of that links and information in the description below. You would apply for an account so that way you can run your CBC check. Now this can range anywhere from $30 to $50. So I'll just put a $50 ticker on that and give you the total tally at the end. Step two would be after submitting for your background check, the NMLS will prompt you to order fingerprints. Again, this is part of the background check and that can range anywhere from 20 to 30 dollars if you are not sure if you can clear that i will pause you there because i would hate for you to invest your time and money okay step number three would be to pass your safe test now the test consists of 120 questions and in order to pass the exam you have to score 75 or above i will tell you it's not the easiest test but none of those tests are right they're out there to trick you i'm not here to share with you how to cram for the test i can share you some links on how to better prepare you for it just so you know and not feel discouraged someone that has life insurance real estate license i've taken this test twice i pass it on the second time and you do have 30 days from the time that you've taken the test in order to retake it. If you are looking to pick up this license, I think this is ideal for you to prepare a couple months in advance. So that way you're not depending on this in order to make ends meet. I think it's a great way to transition. For example, if you have a job now and you're wanting to proactively move away from your current position and go full-time as an MLO or even something on the side, this will give you that buffer due to the repercussions or time that they allow you to retake the exam. And so the exam does cost $110 and that's a fee that you have to pay every time you take the test. Number four would be to then pass the test. And once you do that, you're going to find a mortgage company or broker to then hang your license. Some of the things that I want you to keep in mind when you're interviewing for mortgage companies, mortgage brokers, or banks, it can vary. Typically, if you're working for a major bank, they don't require this license. You are working under their umbrella. Their dynamics is a little different than actually being independent because when you work for a bank, that's your ideal banking hours, whereas an MLO, which is what I am and what I hire, is 
you get more flexibility and your pay structure can vary as well. So when you're shopping for a mortgage company, I would highly encourage for you to ask questions. What would the mentorship look like in the beginning, the training? What are some of the comp plan options? Are there different tiers to choose from? Are there marketing packages that I can elect from? Being a mortgage loan officer today means having the ability to market yourself online digitally. I am a big advocate of social media content. That's how I drive a lot of my business. And if you are looking to do the same, you want to make sure that the company allows for it. And if they have any systems and places to help you promote your business, so let's reel it in. The five steps that I mentioned is making sure you take your classes, get your background check, fingerprints, applying for the tests and passing the exam, and then actually interviewing some mortgage companies. This can all be accomplished as a total of $550 because the classes can vary based on where you live and who you choose to buy the courses from, that can fluctuate. But ultimately, I broke it down where $50 is for your criminal background check, got $30 for fingerprints, $110 for your national exam, $15 for a credit report. And this is me rounding up. All in all, it's less than $550. And I think then it would come down to, is this career change a good fit for me? And one of the questions I would start to ask myself is, where where would I get my business from? If I were to pause and say, does anyone in my circle need this type of help? Whether they're family or friends. Do you know anyone in your age group, church group, bunko, or wherever you go work out, whatever that looks like, will they turn to you as a mortgage professional? Will you be the thought leader? And that takes time. But at the end of the day is, can you be able to identify one or two people up front? And so that way you have a baseline to be able to get your business up and running, have a deal and identify if this is a good fit for you. And so what makes you a good loan originator? Someone that is organized and detail oriented. A lot of our business requires knowing how to read guidelines, being able to make sure sure that the client or the business owner meets all of the criteria to be able to qualify for the loan. Having a background of networking, connecting, prospecting, those are all the qualities of a good loan originator. Because yes, someone can go out and buy leads online, but I'll tell you right now, that would be probably the fastest and quickest way to burn you out and want to leave this industry. Anything that we do, it's always better to be referred business. It's easier to work with someone that knows you and is going to make your job a lot easier. So having good customer relationship is key. A lot of times you're going to be working with these clients for more than 45 plus days. An average loan takes about 30 days to close. Granted, we can close faster. Some may take longer depending on the type of product that you're working with, but ultimately you're going to be speaking or connecting, meeting with this person face-to-face -face on the phone for 45 days, give or take, and sometimes longer. This is a very emotional industry. You're helping someone buy their home for the first time, pick up their investment property, looking to help a family or friend that needs a loan. Anytime you need a loan, it can be stressful because you are pressed for time. So those are some of the qualities that we look for. Let's get into the pros and cons of this business. Some of the cons I would share and caution you with is that majority of the times commission only. Are there some companies that will pay you hourly or maybe a, a, a draw? It can differ based on the company. So that's, that's important for you to entertain and explore that because if they do offer it, it may mean less commission draw for you. And some of the cons would be, it can sometimes take you three, six months before you get your first deal. I don't wanna sway you to feel that's always the case, but results vary based on the amount of work you put in. If you're calling on contacts, attending open houses, going to networking events, meeting with industry partners for the first 30, 60 days, I don't see how you would not be able to come out ahead and have business on the other side. So the amount of work that you put in will definitely yield you the results. Some of the pros, I just want to make sure that if you're used to making a certain amount of money, this may be something to transition into. 
because our market is becoming more buyer's market. People are picking up properties due to inventory being available, but a lot of first time home buyers aren't eligible because of the interest rates. The pros for me is I love the flexibility of this position. You can truly make your own schedule every day. This industry can provide a lot of opportunities. You don't have to be a loan originator. There's opportunities to become a loan underwriter, a loan processor, maybe a loan assistant to get your feet wet before actually going full-blown MLO. So some of those positions I shared with you does come with a salary, an hourly wage. However, going in as an MLO, you're commission only majority of the times, at least a lot of the companies that I've interviewed. What does mentorship look like? That can vary across the board as you work with a company or a manager that will give you the tools and resources to groom you to become the best loan officer. At the end of the day, it's up to you to really put the effort and take the time to learn the guidelines of these loan products. At the end of the day, I love being a loan officer. I've been able to help a lot of family, friends, the community that reach out to me on YouTube because my niche is providing non-qualified more mortgage options. I tend to offer loan products that are outside your typical loan options that you are aware of. And I think it's exciting when you're able to provide solutions. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have questions on how to get started, all of my information is below. If you're looking to entertain a mortgage company, we are licensed in over 21 states and growing here at Absolute Mortgage and Lending. If you would like to drop me your resume, send that over to my email. I would love to connect with you. Thanks so much for dropping in today. I'll see you guys on the next one.